Welcome to the Sword and Trial podcast. The Sword and Trial is a ministry of Founders Ministries, and Founders exist for the recovery of the gospel and the reformation of local churches. I'm Tom Askell. And I'm Graham Gundon. We're delighted to have you join us for this special edition of the Sword and Trial as we get to visit with our friends from Idaho, and we'll introduce them to those of you that may not know them, but I doubt we have anybody who doesn't really know them. And uh, then we're going to have a, a, what we hope will be a very fruitful conversation. But before that, let me mention to you some exciting things going on with the Institute of Public Theology. There are some developments that have happened over the last couple of months that I think are uh, just uh, full of tremendous potential. We hope to make some formal announcements here in January about what the the Lord has been doing with that new institute and uh, the opportunities that we're going to have going forward for students. But let me mention one other specific thing is that right now we do have, uh, through the kindness of some donors, an opportunity to match any gift, any gift. tax-deductible gift you give to the Institute of Public Theology will be doubled. And so if the Lord has enabled you to invest in sending missionaries to the future, pastors to churches and generations to come that will be well-trained and be uh, challenged to think theologically, rigorously so about the day in which we live, we would encourage you to consider investing in the Institute of Public Theology. If I can help you with more information about that, uh, don't hesitate to contact me. We also have the Founders Conference coming up in January. Where else would you rather be? in January than Southwest Florida, and we anticipate that selling out the way that tickets are going right now. Registrations have been great, so if you're interested in coming, you need to register soon. Well, we want to welcome our friends from Cross Politics, so it's great to have uh, Toby and uh, David and Gabe with us, and you guys have been doing this Cross Politics show for how many years now? Seven years. Seven years, yeah. So, September's our seventh year birthday, so. Is that right? Well, that's wonderful. Yes. And Happy lo- birthday. Yeah, lots of people have benefited from that. I've benefited from it and enjoyed being on there with you and just uh, kind of learning more about some of the ways that God had brought you all together and how he's kept you and the, and the good work that you're trying to do and are doing in terms of informing people and thinking about life, about culture, and about politics from a Christian point of view. So we feel a, a great uh, appreciation for you, and we're delighted to uh, call you brothers and encourage you in all the good work that you're doing out there in Idaho. So uh, with that being said, that's why it was really disturbing to me when you guys stepped on a cow pie and threw Baptist under the bus uh, a few weeks ago. So, uh, you know, we, that's, not, that's been something. I don't remember how many weeks ago it was, probably four or five weeks ago now. And uh, we exchanged some back and forth, and but we did it as brothers. You know, it's not like, oh, man, you guys are heretics and out of here with you. It's not that at all. We just think you made some, some fatal mistakes in your reasoning, in your biblical understanding, and uh, maybe even your historical theological understanding as well. So with that, as I wrote an article about it. I think, Toby, you've written a couple of articles, and I've not, I read the first one, but if you've written, a, I think you wrote at least one more after that, and I've not read that, uh, but you guys also did some more podcasts uh, about it and a lot of stuff on social media. Gabe, you wrote an article. I read your article uh, as well, and appreciate the fact that you guys are willing to engage, but I, I just wasn't satisfied with the arguments Hello. that I saw from you. So uh, Gabe mm-hmm. suggested that we provide an opportunity to have an ongoing uh, further conversation. And that's what has led us to this podcast. So uh, welcome to the Sword and Trial. Well, thank you very much for having us, Pastor Tom and Graham. Thanks for having us on. We we really appreciate you guys. And thanks for willing to have this conversation. For sure. Good to see you, Doc. Yeah, good to see you guys too. So tell me, how all this stands with you right now? I mean, what are your thoughts about uh, the stuff that you, you guys said with Jason Farley and uh, the the pushback you got from not just Baptists, but primarily Baptists, uh, about how you portrayed Baptist theology as being the cause of transgenderism? Have you rethought that at all, or you still stand by that? It wants it. I want to say, I'll, I'll, no, I'll, take, I'll, it. I'll take it. I'm a, <laughs> tag your it. Tag your it. You guys get the next one, though, because oh, I think he's saving game. the harder question for you guys. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, no, uh, pre- again, appreciate you taking the time, asking it. Um, I think we're um, very glad to stand by the show as it, as it originally aired. Uh, we, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I think that in the context that the, uh, the, the, the fatal comments were made, the, the particular ones that were made as the show transitioned into the backstage, um, are given plenty of context um, in the broader uh, show that um, the, the context was one of um, the broad evangelical world, the American uh, individualistic Baptist culture. I think um, our, our culture is 
um, in terms of the, the primary um, uh, evangelical presence in our culture, I would describe it as, um, in actually many good ways, actually Baptistic. Um, I've told people for years that, um, you know, I think fundamentalists, uh, many of most of which were Baptists, um, you need to turn off your yes, notifications. Somebody That's needs to turn off their notifications. Not me. Um, the, uh, uh, the, uh, it, it's, it's, they've done actually quite um, a number of good things um, because I think, and I think in many ways have saved our culture, their insistence on holding close to scripture, uh, the authority of the scripture, not budging on it. And so I think for, for good, um, there's been quite a bit of good that's come from that predominant um, Baptist culture in our land. And at the same time, I think um, one of the weaknesses that's also um, predominated our culture has been a kind of individualism uh, that has focused on uh, a lot of the stuff that uh, Carl Truman expressed in his books recently, Rise and Triumph of the uh, Modern um, Self, I think it was. And um, I think I think that that is the context in which this, this conversation took place. And I think, um, you know, was, was Jason, did Jason have his, um, his, uh, his tongue in his cheek to some extent as he was, um, as he was impressing and pushing that point? Um, sure. But I think he was making a, a true point, uh, which is that that has been the predominant, uh, culture in our land. Even I, I I've said in follow-up shows, I think even Presbyterians are Baptists in many respects. <laughs> Um, in, Watch in, it in, one fight at a time. In, in, but <laughs> and again, I don't mean, and I, we've said this multiple times. We're not talking about 1689 confessional Baptists. Um, and the reason, and the way I would make the distinction there is, I think when you put the priority on the sovereignty of God saving an individual, a confessional Baptist waits to baptize pr- upon profession of faith because they're waiting on God's sovereign choice. I think mm-hmm. that's a really big distinction mm-hmm. to make. I I, may, I think that's a very different picture. But the predominant Baptist culture in our land is Arminian, um, is highly individualistic, and it's all about um, individuals making a choice, deciding for themselves. Um, and uh, I, and I think, given that, I think there has been uh, that that has definitely been a significant cause of the weakness of the church um, in being able to handle uh, the transgender the crisis. Identity crisis. Yeah. I don't know if that helps at all, or only. only no, I agree we- with you. Yeah, I think I think first off, you know, I, I don't think the pushback is due to just people being offended um, per se. Like for in my own instance, you know, I grew up as a little brother, um, so things like this, it's it's hard to offend me. I think it's the um, the communication uh, that was put forth, and, and what, what you said there, Toby, uh, I think is helpful to say, you know, and, and I think I can I can get behind what you said for the most part that yeah, this individualism, this kind of Arminian view of doctrine and theology and the uh, person's own choice to be saved, et cetera. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of that at play here when we think about transgenderism. Uh, but that wasn't what was said. I mean, it was Baptist theology. So if you wanted to say Arminianism, maybe that would have been accurate. Um, but Arminianism itself doesn't come out of Baptist theology. In fact, it started in Dutch Reformed theology. And Arminianism has a long history, but uh, I think was really spurred on by the the beginnings of the Enlightenment and that individualism that began to come out of the Enlightenment. So, yeah. so to say that it was Baptist theology or that Baptist theology is the cause, um, even if you want to say American Baptist <laughs> theology, I just don't think is accurate. And I don't even know if you guys would believe that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We said in the in the first uh, show, the f- the front part of the show, um, we said American Baptist theology turned secularized. That was the specific definition that we were working with. Um, and I grew up, I grew up in Texas. I grew up around. Really had no it, idea. Did, did I did really? I mention this to you guys? Uh, really, you're from Texas. Tom, Tom, did you know I grew up in Texas? Yeah, I did. That's why I like you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's the reason he's Go so Aggies. disappointed in you. Too. Go Aggies, dig them, <laughs> dig them. Um. And, and I grew up around, I mean, I'm thinking when, I, when we were talking on the show, I was thinking of guys like Pastor Jeffries and First Baptist in Dallas, um, you know, Rick Warren, um, mm. you know, I, those are the guys I had in mind when we were talking about like American Baptist theology turned secularized. Right. Um, and so for me, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I that's stand it. by that that's terminology. Yeah, that's exactly you know. what was, I think, what was being talked about. Okay, so let me, I mean, because uh, there are two big concerns, I guess, that I've had. I tried to articulate in an article that I wrote is one yeah. is what was actually said, which I think was just wrong. And then second, and we, we can deal with the second one uh, here in a few minutes, is then the way it was defended and the, you know, what you guys did. Because what you just said, Toby, I don't disagree with what you said, but that's not what was said 
in the shows. And so when, when I wrote my article, I actually quoted word for word what was said. And Gabe, I can, I can give you the, that argument that, okay, in your mind, you're thinking back in Texas, but you know, here's what you actually said. I mean, you said, okay, I'm Baptist wrench. And you just said what you said, and Farley laughs, as I know, and David gave me permission. So, Knox, this is all on your head from what Farley just said, right? That, uh, <laughs> you know, you set this up, so Knox is the one to blame for all this. And then, Wrench, mm-hmm. Gabe, you go on to say, you came out and said that my view of waiting till my child is ready to confess faith in our Lord Jesus, in the Lord, and then mm-hmm. baptize him is related to identity, the identity crisis found in transgenderism. So, that statement, waiting till your child is ready to confess faith in our Lord, that's not just an Arminian uh, practice among Baptists. The, the mm-hmm. strictest Reformed Baptists could say, yeah, you know, we're, we're not going to baptize in, until someone confesses faith in Christ. So while in your mind you might be thinking Rick Warren or you know, some more Arminian Baptist that believes everything hinges upon the decision of the individual, what you describe there is not limited to that. What you describe there is just universally Baptist. It is a part of our uh, sacramental theology and what we do and how we practice uh, believers' baptism. And then that's, that's when Farley doubled down. So I didn't say related to. I said is the cause of. Mm-hmm. So though the context in your mind, I give you that, that's mm-hmm. not what was stated. And in fact, uh, uh, Knox, I think you went on and said, but okay, but wait a minute. You know, we've got Baptists here, and they're trying to do everything right. Uh, they're uh, having family worship. They're covenantal and Armenian Baptists aren't covenantal. And so even in your own efforts to express what you're talking about, the kind of Baptist you're talking about, you don't distinguish between Reformed Baptists and Armenian Baptists. You actually include, by that language, Reformed Baptists. So I mean, my question is, I mean, do you think you misspoke at all? Do you, do you think that you said things you shouldn't have said at all, or is it? are you just good with it? Well, I, f- I can talk to you about that line right there that you're talking about when I was talking to Jason. We were going to the backstage at that point, Doc, and I was mm-hmm. trying to get to that point to have that conversation where we're talking about covenantal Baptists. We never actually turned that corner all the way, and, mm-hmm. and I asked Jason about that too. He never really heard that part as we were making that transition. So, the, And then Gabe interrupted, I think, at that point too. So we never really got to the point where we're talking about covenantal Baptists when, uh, at that point. So I think it's even clear in that statement alone that we never turned the corner <laughs> to talking about that. And and we were, I, I'm, I think we're happy to say, if if you were hanging on to that line and then went right over into the backstage and, and thought we were talking about that, we're happy to say we, yeah, that we, wasn't, we weren't. That and wasn't and that, that wasn't the, and, and, but the, if you listen, I think, again, if you listen to the whole show and you, th- and you say, no, I don't have any problem somebody saying, so were you talking about covenantal Baptist and that? We said, no, we weren't. And we, you know, we said that right away. We said that to, you know, James White had tweeted at us right away and mm-hmm. asked us about that. And we said, no, we're not talking about 1689ers. Um, so we're happy to clarify that. Um, but the, the, the context of the entire show is focused on this hyper-individualism. And I think if, you know, one of the things that I, I've wanted to ask some folks, and I, I mean, I don't want to um, throw a curveball at you or anything like that, but just um, one of the questions I've had is it just seems like, the, we usually when we're, I mean, there's there's some pretty stark, hard statements in Scripture that all of us have to hand, deal with. Um, you know, and I, I was thinking of things like, you know, James says, you know, we are justified by works and not faith only. And it's mm-hmm. like a pretty stark statement. And it's like, look at what the words say. We are not just, we are justified by works and not by faith only. Well, as good Protestants, we don't say, well, I guess we have to become Roman Catholics now because <laughs> look what he said. Right. Um, what we do is we take that, that, that statement and we say, well, what is, it, what is meant by it in James' context? And then, and then we you know, zoom out even further and say, well, what is the Holy Spirit doing with this in the, in the, in the broader uh, New Testament uh, soteriology? And I'm not, li- please don't misunderstand me, I'm not likening cross-politic to Holy Scripture by <laughs> any stretch of the imagination. Um, but I just would say in terms of just basic rules of interpretation, hermeneutics, um, you know, what you what you tend to do is you, what we're supposed to do is you, you take a statement and you say, okay, what is meant in this context? Is there a sense in which it is true? Um, and if there is a sense in which it is true, that, that, you know, we say, well, then that's 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 how it's that was how it was meant. Unless unless, you know, there's something um, that is compelling you to interpret it 
in a, in a different way. And so in this case, I would say, yeah, I understand that somebody could hear the, the statement all by itself and say, is he shooting at me? I'm a good 1689er. I'm a covenantal Baptist. Um, and ask the question, are you shooting at me? And, and we said right away, no, we weren't. Um, and is there enough context between the beginning of the show all the way to the end of the backstage that makes clear what we were aiming at? I would say yes, I think repeatedly. And again, we're happy to clarify, we were talking about Arminian Baptists, which are the, um, I think, the predominant uh, flavor of evangelical Christianity in our land. Um, and, and I think that's just consistent with basic biblical hermeneutics. Yeah, well, let's let's go with that thought then. So um, let's say that uh, we could have in um, Holy Writ, James talking with Paul. And Paul says, okay, but suppose there are uh, Christians out there and they're saying, man, we're, we're trying to do everything right. We believe in Jesus. We're really trusting Jesus for God to justify us. And then James says, well, you think faith justifies you? No, you're justified by works. I mean, wouldn't, would, would you, would your argument hold up that, well, you got to put James in context. Well, yeah, we have context. The context was at best muddy. I mean, that's the best that I can say about it. So again, I'll grant that Gabe, in your mind, you're thinking the worst kind of Baptist you grew up with and Knox, I'll grant in your mind, you're trying to turn a corner that wasn't turned, but what was actually said, what was actually done just undermines that. That's, that's my point. And it does bring up the, the second concern that I have, and I think a lot of people have, is, you know, appreciate you telling us what was in your mind, but what was in your mind didn't come across the lips to explain it. And as the words actually came out, it, it, it's, I think, indefensible what was actually said. And then to see, you know, well, no, we're not backing off of this. We stand by everything we said. We think it was fine. And anybody who's, you know, thinking rightly or interpreting rightly would give it that the benefit of the doubt and understand that's not what we said. <clears throat> that just sounds, I, I think it was Jeff Wright who said, this is like a Big Eva moment for you. I'm not accusing you of being Big Eva, but that's exactly <laughs> what Big Eva does. They say something, and when they're called on it, they say, oh, no, 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 no. You misunderstood. You know, if you would just employ proper hermeneutics, a then you would do that. Yeah, it does. It feels like a Mott and Bailey. And I know you guys aren't like that. I mean, that's what made this so disconcerting. It seems to me that the simplest way out was just say, you know what, man, we laid an egg. Yeah, you know, shouldn't have said that. It was wrong. And, you know, we understand it's not the problem of the hearer. It's the problem of the speaker. And, yeah, we should have clarified. It's not what we intended to say. But for well, some reason, it seems like there's an allergy to that. <laughs> no, no. Uh, well, I, I feel like there's an allergy to not buying what we actually said that in our follow-up clarifications uh, i feel like i'm uh you know we had uh weeks of clarifying conversations i even said on twitter when this broke on twitter i i said on a thread i was like you know i don't have james white in mind at all when i was talking about this right. and mm -hmm. and 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 that was like the day it broke i said that right um, and I said that on multiple Facebook threads and stuff like that. And I, and I, mm -hmm. part of the follow up conversation was, you know, to me, it was like, why is no one believing my clarifications? It was really weird. And then, <laughs> you know, even you. talking with you right now, Tom, I'm, I'm like, well, we said American Baptist theology turned secularized. I believe that you. Was, I believe that that's great. in your mind. That's not what but came no, no, across no, no. It wasn't your lips. in my mind. It was just in my, it's also in my words we, too. When we, I said that, in the, when we said that in the show, we actually did say American Baptist theology secularized. That was actually said in the show. Hey doc, doc titled you, the second episode, the failure of Baptist theology. So doc, with your, with your best loving brotherly hat on for a black brother, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he pulled that card. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what what do you think that we were trying to say with your with your lovingly hat on? What what would you think we were trying to say? Mike, I, I can grant everything that you're telling us in follow up that you meant and what was in your mind. So I, I think the best, most loving, generous interpretation I can come up with is that you just spoke very sloppily about things that you wanted to say that you wound up not saying. And huh. so, you know, I mean, when I listen to the clarifications, I'm saying, that's great. Amen. I agree. That's not what you said. It's not what you said. So I think you're trying to make the very case that you guys have articulated that in the, in the 
broad world of American evangelicalism where there is this hyper subjectivism, hyper individualism that you do find cultivated in many aspects of Baptist uh, approach to Christianity. It's there. I abominate it. I'm opposed to it. Uh, A lot of people inside, outside of Baptist life are opposed to that way of thinking about reality and about the Christian life, that that does indeed have connections to what we see going on in the broader uh, deterioration of our culture to saying I'm a man born as a woman or something like that. So yep. granted, yep. all of that, I think it's legitimate. It's absolutely legitimate. But in the attempt to make that argument, you said things that are indefensible, that are wrong, and that that actually undermine a, a lot of the uh, ground that many of us stand on within the Baptist world that would agree with you. It's Ru- almost as Ru- if it's almost as if like the, the argument that you're making right now, which again, like Tom, I, I believe everything, all your clarifications and everything, but it's almost as if the point that you're trying to make using the word Baptist at all doesn't help your case to say Baptist theology secularized produces this. You could American have the whole conversation. You could have the whole conversation without even bringing up Baptist. Or it's talking about the failure of Baptist theology. I mean, you, you titled that second episode that. Yeah. Do, do you have a, I just want to clarify real quick. Do you guys understand, how, I don't know if this is a just a tech thing, but um, so we had a, a, the main episode was started off with kind of talking about um, transgender, transgender surgeries right. going on at Boston Children's Hospital. And, right. and it flowed into that conversation where, again, that, where we, we, it was specifically stated, American Baptist theology secularized. That was the content that was then flowed in. We have, and then that second episode, Failure of Baptist Theology, is actually a continuation of that same conversation, you know, sort of backstage. Usually it's just members only, but since there was such a hubbub, we just released it to everybody so that everybody could hear it for themselves. I just want to make sure that you guys understand that those, those two, it's actually one episode basically that's just, it's, it, there's a, you know, usually a paywall jump. Does that make sense right. to you guys? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I get that. And, okay. and again, but that just highlights uh, what Knox actually said versus what he was trying to do in saying, yeah. but I'm a faithful Baptist. I have family devotions. I'm covenantal. So that's yeah. the transition. One of the, one of the other things just to mention, I, I mean, not that any of us does theology or <laughs> based on um, votes, but just for whatever it's worth, um, while there's been a number of our good friends like you all pushing back and saying, guys, I think you misspoke. I think you, you think you messed up. I think you should retract this, uh, which we've been willing to take and consider seriously. Yeah. I would say by the same token, we have heard from piles and piles of Baptists, mm-hmm. like piles who said, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's what I grew up. That's in. why I became a reformed Baptist. That's why I became reformed <laughs> Baptist. And, and and like and so like I mean all over the place. We've been inundated by Baptists who said I'm a happy Baptist. I'm 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 happily here, and I know exactly what you guys were talking about. I heard you loud and clear. I knew exactly what you meant, and you hit it on the nose. Yeah. Well, I, you know, again, we could I guess compare notes and, and scorecards, uh, but we've heard from tons of Presbyterians. Who said, yeah. thank you. Thank you for calling that out. That is not Presbyterian <laughs> theology. That's not what we uh, espouse, a- as well as Baptists. So, again, it just seems to me this, there, there's, uh, it just seems to me there's real miscommunication. And in my vantage point, I think, again, I know you guys, so I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt in the context, but I think you just misspoke. I think you misspoke. I, I'd be interested also in, in what you are saying now. Um, because I'm not sure I agree with this statement. How is it that American Baptist theology secularized is itself the cause of transgenderism? I can see how American Baptist theology, which has been inundated by pagan worldviews, how that can lend itself to transgenderism, but then that in and of itself is not the cause. It's those pagan worldviews which come into American Baptist theology, which are the causes of transgenderism. So I'm not even sure that I would agree with the statement that American Baptist theology mm-hmm. secularized is the cause. Well, this is Greg, what, I guess, can I ask you a question real quick? Do you think that um, pedo communion, Presbyterian theology has any effect on society whatsoever? There's so few people that believe that, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, what about pedo baptism? Burn. 
Yeah, I think it can. I think it has historically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's had a bad effect on society. From if you're a good Baptist, you got to believe that, though, right? Well, just if you're a Christian. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I think that what well, I think that we wait, wait, we should clip that. We should clip that. If you're a Christian, put it on a T-shirt. Let's send that around the web. I, I, I think that. I think that's. I think that's a. That was an indicative statement. <laughs> I no, I said I if. That's subjunctive, actually, Toby. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the grammar failure. Oh. I, I think there, there's a, what we're talking about there and what you guys just observed is that there is something that comes from how we operate through our sacraments and through how we do things in the church that have a flow all the way out to the culture. And so yeah. while we might disagree on what's doing what, we all know that something's happening between us that's causing something in the culture where we haven't gotten things right. Yeah, but it seems simplistic to say, I mean, I, I would not say that uh, a pedo baptism caused the, the failure of the evangelical movement in any situation, any era of time. You don't think, think pedo baptism has caused the failure of the evangelical movement? In any, any area. I wouldn't, I wouldn't lay it completely on pedo baptism. I might say, yeah, here are contributing factors and here are things sure. that, that relate to it. But I would not, I can't imagine, there might be a situation I'm just not thinking of where you, you could say that, but I, right now, top of my head, no, I wouldn't say that. I mean, and that's to, to say Baptist theology is the cause of uh, transgenderism. It's not the only cause. We didn't say it was the only cause. It is the cause. Yeah. It wasn't the only no. cause. <laughs> just the just God. The, the major. Not the only God. The God. It's just the major <laughs> cause. The biggest yeah. cause. No. I, I, and then when and we yeah. define what that looked like and what that means when we talked about what kind of Baptist. That you agree with us on. Yeah, but even like the illustration of uh, Farley's 16-year-old son uh, with talking to his Baptist friend, again, what you're talking about there is, is our sacramental theology. You're not talking about Arminianism versus Calvinism. You're talking about the practice of believers' baptism. But that was a good, that was a good ex- example, though, wasn't it, with Farley's talking about his son and his friend? That was a good example of, of what we're talking about. In- individualism. Individualism. In in one sense, yes, but the example yeah. the example that is used is no different between Reformed Baptists, Armenian Baptists, or otherwise. It, that is but a God, Baptist you can practice. Make that distinction. You can make that distinction, though, couldn't you? Just now, you just made the distinction. Sure, sure I can. But in the context yeah. of everything that was said, not what was thought, what was said, there is no distinction. Well, Jason it, Farley gives uh, an example uh, of his son and his friend to make the context even better. And, and I guess, actually, and I would add to it, in, in the backstage show, there's a there's a moment, I would just remind everybody that I wasn't there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had you been there, this would have been cleared up. That's, that's, that's right, that's right, Tom. But 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 uh, Jared Longshore was sitting in my, my seat, and he actually, at, at a point in the backstage show, said, now, if one of my good Baptist brothers is concerned that we're saying that you are the direct cause of this transgender stuff— I want to put my arm around him and I want to assure him that's, that's not what we're saying. I think, I think there was a clarification made in, in that very show where he said, I want to put my arm around him. He says, you're tempted to be upset at what we just said. We're not saying you're the direct cause of this. And again, it's, um, it's the Mott and Bailey. I mean, that's the way it comes across to me. God only whispers about sexual sin. We're not saying God doesn't care about sexual sin. We're not saying that, uh, you know, adultery is uh, less egregious than pride. Or, I mean, it's you're saying it, then you're saying you're not saying it. Well, but if the if you're asking for clarifications, though, in I mean, in in the same show, I mean, we gave a bunch of clarifications outside the show. But if you're you're, you're you know you say something and you say, okay, just in case any of you are tempted to misunderstand that, we're not saying this. We're not saying X. I I don't know how you could be more clear. Well, I think the clarity lies in the contradiction of the statements. I don't know how you can have them both. How you can say this is the cause. And now just if any of you get offended by that, we're not saying this is the cause. (laughs) 
Well, I think, I think the, 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 and actually, that's a great question. And I would say the answer, though, so press it. And we say, okay, is there any sense in which it's true? Again, then I, that's, I would go back to, again, basic hermeneutics. Is, is there any sense in which, uh, you know, so Jesus says, you know, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot have life within you. And, and a bunch of people were offended by that statement and stopped following him. Because, understandably, that's kind of crazy sounding. And, and yeah. at the same time, is there any sense in which Je- what Jesus said is true? Oh, absolutely. Um, there's a, there's a sense in which it's true. You know, same same thing with um, again back to, to James. You, you're, you're a man is justified by works and and not by faith alone. The only you know, as Roman Catholics like to remind us Protestants, the only place in the New Testament where faith alone is used, it's actually negated. And 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 so you, you say, well, what does that mean? Well, is there any sense in which it is true? How is it true? And so I would say the same thing with these two statements. You have the cause, and you know, Jason's got a big grin on his face, and he's you know pressing a point. And I think he was making a true point while telling the joke. Well, well, he's also said, I, you know, he's, he's also said, but I was also, you know, I was, I was trying to to make it and say it in a in a funny way, in a in a way that would get people's attention. Um, and then Jared comes along a little while later and says, "Now we're not saying this." And so I think it that that um, that communication then drives people to say, "Well, in what sense could it be true?" And I think that's the point where we're saying the sense in which it is true is in this broad evangelical Arminian Baptist culture secularized, it is true there, which you guys agreed with. And I would just say, it seems to me that if, if it has, if there is a true way to interpret it, then I think that it's a reasonable statement to stand behind while clarifying, we're, we're not saying this and we're not saying that, but we are saying this. You know, Doc, if you, um, I, I remember we were in Texas and I saw you preach in person for the first time. And it was amazing to me just how articulate, passionate, um, did I say articulate? <laughs> you were. And I've watched you, I watched you um, do many times just come out, just I'm impressed with your articulation ability to be able to be sharp. I'm not like that. I envy that in a lot of ways. And so if you're saying, hey, Knox, you need to become sharper and more articulate, I agree. I'm working on that. I'm trying to develop that skill in the process of doing this show and talking to you even. So I, I, I totally understand that. And I want to do better at that. That's not, um, that's not a criticism that I don't take seriously, but when I, what I want to try and communicate is what I intended to say, what was intended to be meant by that. So can I be better at articulating even just now? Yes, I could be better at articulating. And those are things that I intend to work on and do better as we move forward down the road. So when somebody like you says, hey, man, here's a good way to say what you meant to say. And here's a good way to articulate what you meant to articulate. I want to take those things and say, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll try and articulate that. And that and so I take that and I'm like, OK, good. That's that's worth hearing. That's worth helping me down the road move forward. So I appreciate that. But I again, I agree with Toby. This is what was intended to be said. This is. Could we have said things better? Oh, of course. I, I could have said what I'm trying to say right now better. <laughs> well, I think it's 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 an absolute truth that um, those things that are communicated, the meaning of those things communicated are dependent upon the one who is communicating, right? And so all of your clarifications, um, that's necessary in order to understand what was in your minds and what, were you, what you were saying. At the same time, there can still be a failure of communication in using words incorrectly in the wrong phrases and the wrong ordering because words do have objective meaning. And so sure. I'll take, you know, what you meant, that is, you know, what you say that you meant, that is what you meant, but there still was a failure in communicating what you did mean. And in the context could, could there be a failure to the listener? Absolutely. Certainly. But could and, and that's what you to what the you, listener to uh, reject our first portion of the context where we say American Baptists are in secular and not bring that into the backstage? Could there be a failure of the listener to do that? Look, yeah, I mean, you, and you guys have said that, and that's kind of where you've dug in your heels, is that it's and all a failure there, of the and, listener. And could there be a failure of the listener to to reject the context of examples that we gave and, and reject uh, the fact that Jared Longshore said we aren't talking about this, we're talking about that? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give you every kind of scenario you want to come up with that it could be a failure of the listener. There's no doubt about that. There also could be a failure with the speaker, and and when you when you yeah. got people who aren't your enemies who are telling you guys you, you just said this wrong, 
and, and you didn't you should have said what you intended to say based upon your qualifications and clarifications afterwards but what you intended to say is not what you said and, and Knox I you know, point well taken about articulation but that's not my concern it's not that you could have oh. said better what you said you should have said different than what you said because what you wanted to say is different than what you actually said and, you know, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, nitpick here, not trying to kill people for a word at all. We all misspeak. But we're all going to be accountable for every idle word that we speak. And, I mean, you guys were dealing with some serious stuff, important stuff, and the way those words were put together to communicate something actually communicated differently than what I am convinced, I believe you, I give you every benefit of the doubt and all the clarifications you intended to say you didn't say you didn't actually say what you intended to say and i think that's what's you know caused a lot of people say man why can't they just admit that you know it just just seems like there's something else going on here i don't know but i'm and i'm not in your shoes and i've misspoken more times than i care to remember i don't believe you but i want to be i want to be in a position that if i got people you know good trustworthy people saying you know what you said this and i'm saying but in my mind that's not what i meant and it, but you said this and i go back and read my own words listen to my own words uh if i've if i've misspoken i just want to own it mm-hmm. yeah. so you know what i misspoke yeah, and I, I, I mean i 110 percent agree tom so i mean i um even in the there was at least one twitter thread back and forth in the follow-up where i was going back and forth and we kind of gotten into an actual it was more of a kind of a, a discussion of new covenant um, the new covenant, which is where, you know, um, uh, Presbyterians and Baptists bump up against each other. And, um, and in the back and forth, I quoted a passage and I, and I said, it doesn't say this. And then my Baptist brother actually quoted me the passage further down where it did say it. And I, I still I, right there in the Twitter thread just said, yeah, you're, you're right. I was wrong. <laughs> and, and so yeah, I, yeah. I, I, that was in the middle of all of this. And so I, I don't have any problem at all. As in, again, if, if, if we say something that is you know, categorically untrue and incorrect. Um, we have, and we will continue to be committed to uh, owning that. Mm-hmm. I think in this instance, the, the the point where I'm not willing to just just fall over or or, or budge is that again, I look at the words and I say, okay, uh, Baptist theology caused transgenderism. Is there any sense in which that's true? Mm-hmm. And I would say, yes, there is a sense in which that's true. Now, are there, are there senses in which it's not true? Of course. Yeah. And we've been happy to say lots of senses in which it's not true. Is there a sense in which it's true? I would say arguably, yes. Now, you might not agree. We may need to have a you know, historical, philosophical um, argument, and I'm happy to have that argument. But again, um, is, is there a sense in which um, our, our land, America, has been um, predominated by a Protestantism um, that is... Uh, Arminian Baptist, and again, granting the points that Arminianism developed from errant Dutch Reformed theology, and uh, you know Charles Finney. Wait, wait. So uh, the Dutch are responsible for transgenderism? They are too. <laughs> okay. And, okay. And, and you know Charles Finney is errant Presbyterian guy who's stoking revivalism that's driving yeah. a bunch of this. I I'm g- happy to grant that too. Was he Baptist? Uh, n- well, well, eh, he started off <laughs> Presbyterian. Oh, okay. we don't know. Mm. Um, but he's confused. I, I guess that would just be my point. It would be the, the only reason I I wouldn't I'm not willing to just say it was wrong is because I think there's a sense in which it's right and and I don't and I think that would be um that would be wrong of me to say that I I think that there's no sense in which what Farley said is is correct I think there is a sense in which it's correct I'm happy to clarify in a number of different ways uh but that would be the reason I so it's not anything more than that though I just want to assure you I'm not like I don't have any I don't have any pride I don't have any ain't no big evil over here no no flesh here (laughs) I'm happy I'm happy to admit when I'm wrong it's just that's just the basic point is I think there's a sense in which it's true and I don't want to I don't want to be I've got to answer before the Lord for that and I want to be faithful and I believe there is a sense in which it's true and that's the only reason why I'm not budging I think I think um there's a sense in which that's true that transgenderism comes from Baptist theology in the same sense that transgenderism comes from Calvinism because Arminianism does come out of Calvinist theology. Right. And so, so wait, a minute, would, wait a minute, Calvinism caused transgenderism. Cause, ca- Calvinism causes trans- transgenderism. I would never no, say that that's I, I the case. Have, I, I don't have a problem with actually having that conversation. In fact, we spend, that's kind of where our labor is at is trying to figure out, okay, what is the church doing wrong? That's causing some of our current cultural problems. We do that with Presbyterians. We do that with Baptists. We do that with everybody. 
that's kind of the main point of our show. We're trying to figure out how is the church um, it's being cultures downstream from the church to get us in this current political situation. Um, so I actually had a number of um, brothers come at me about Presbyterian potential Presbyterian sins with with our theology gone secularized. All and I think and it's I'll, true, and I think there's some truth to that, and I'm happy to have that conversation. Um, it, it it doesn't offend me. In fact, I've said on our show multiple times. Um, I can't find a Presbyterian church that ha- where the pastor is not wearing robes that hasn't gone gay in forty years. Um, I think that's I think that's largely true. I think you can see that in Anglican Church. I think you can see that in Episcopalian Church. I think you can see that in a, in a lot of Reformed churches where the pastor is wearing a dress. Ooh. St. Andrews in Orlando. <laughs> you, get, you guys should get Burke on that show. <laughs> Us uh, rolling Burke, yeah. Uh, I didn't hear what you said. Doc. I, 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 I mentioned St. Andrews uh, Church, where Sproul ministered, and where uh, Burke Parsons now ministers. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll give you that. Spurgeon had a little quip you might appreciate. He said, "An, uh, an ape is ne'er so much an ape as when he wears a popish cape." Talking about men who wore robes in the pulpit. But then he himself, when he preached in Calvin's pulpit, wore Calvin's robe. And he said because it was Calvin's, it made it less offensive to him to, to do so. <laughs> <laughs> I, like that. I, I, that. I, I, I knew I liked that. Spurgeon. Wasn't, wasn't there an let, Anglican? Let say, uh, Go ahead, Doc. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, let me say to Toby what you said earlier, man. I, I say amen to that. I don't want anybody backing off of things that they're just not convinced in their own mind that they should back off on. So, I mean, that's why I would want to try to persuade people. I wouldn't want to try to manipulate, embarrass, cajole anybody into saying, yeah. okay, 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 you know, uncle. I mean, not that. Not that I think you guys would ever do that. But I think that's exactly the right response and why these kind of conversations, hopefully, over time, can be helpful to uh, bring perspective and to maybe press points to shed more light on things. Um, Thank you, yeah, there there is one thing I I, I had to, I, the article I wrote. I just wrote one. I didn't even want to write that one, but there are other things that I have wondered about. And I wonder if you guys would be willing to to just help me think rightly about this statement, Knox. I think I asked you this directly, and uh, you referred to some context. But at one point, Jason Farley said that justification by faith is infant baptism in sacramental form, and I I wonder if he misspoke. Or if I'm just missing something there uh, on that, what is that? Help me understand that. I think he said infant baptism uh, is justification by faith in sacramental form. I think that may have been what he wanted to say, but it's not what he said. Um, okay, if I may have written it down wrong, but yeah, I wrote he down. Said, I, I, I believe what he wanted to say. If he, I have to go back and look at it, but yeah, I believe sure. it was just infant baptism is justification by faith in sacramental form. Okay. Well, I, if, if that's what he meant, I mean, if that's what he intended yeah, to say, that's, then, what he, that's what he meant. Okay. Explain that one to me. I mean, help me understand what you're, what you're affirming there. I think it's, it's Calvinism. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, I can, I, I don't. I don't know that I caught that. Was that in your that, knock some plug? No, no, no. That was in uh, the show. Oh, that was in the yeah. backstage. Oh, I think. Was it backstage? I, I, yeah. I, my my guess and the reason why I, I wouldn't that, that wouldn't uh, give me heartburn that that statement is I, I'm guessing what he's what he's getting at is the fact that um, uh, when we uh, uh, when, when we're baptizing an infant we're doing it by faith. There's a, there's a, there's promises we believe that are granted to our children. In the in the continuity of the covenants from the old covenant to the new covenant, and um, and so and, and there's a kind of um, in, in justification by faith alone. Um, you know, Ephesians two says that by grace you are saved through faith, and that faith is not of yourselves; is a gift of God. It's all of grace. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. Um, and I think the the point that would be would be wanted to be made is that um, there's a kind of complete passivity. In, yeah. sa- in salvation, that, that God, is, God the sovereign one saves us, and it's not anything that we do ourselves. It's all a gift. It's all grace. And I know, of course, you believe that too, Tom. But um, I think the, the point would be in an infant baptism, you have this sort of, it's pictured in that way in that you have this passive, you know, six-week-old or four-week-old infant there um, who's not doing anything, has to be brought, you know, down front, um, has water put on their head. Um, and so I think that's the point. It's just the, the utter passivity and um, uh, of of the action, picturing again. I think the point that, that there's Symbol. a good, there's a real good, uh, there's an important qualifier there in sacramental form. So we don't believe in baptismal regeneration. We're not saying that it's automatically justification's happening in that moment automatically. 
But there's a mm. picture of it, and that's what we mean. I think that's what's meant by sacramental form. There's a symbol of it that there, it's complete passivity. It's all dependent on the sovereignty of God. I think that's exactly what Jason was trying to say. All right, good. Well, I, that uh, clarifies that, and uh, I had assumed maybe he turned those things around uh, in what he said, and uh, so that is, that's helpful. Thanks. And just for clarification, you're not saying that it's um, the child there is being justified by the faith of the parents or the ba- faith of the minister but rather right. the assumption the that the child will have faith and will be justified by faith. Correct. Okay. Yeah, well, that's, we, that's helpful. We, uh, while we, we cling to the promises and we believe that that's um, how God ordinarily works, we absolutely hold to the necessity of individual regeneration, which is by faith alone and by a personal faith in the individual, and whenever, and, and whenever the Lord gives that faith. Okay. Doc, what bothered you about you, that? Can I just ask what bothered? Like, what were you? Was there something there that you thought might have been problematic? Or yeah, well, the justification by faith is infant baptism in any form. It goes on to say a sacramental form, and so I'm trying to think. Man, are are you putting more? Are you objectifying the covenant uh, so much that those who receive the covenant sign are therefore justified? That was my concern. Right, and we and we, and we would just we we're, you know we just hold to the Westminster, um, uh, our uh, uh, confession that that says that um, that it symbolizes justification, a sign and seal. Uh, it's a sign and seal of it, but nevertheless, um, the efficacy is not tied to the moment in which it is administered. Um, whereas the grace that comes with the with the sacrament is administered in the Lord's good timing when He gives the gift of faith. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's helpful. That's clarifying. I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 So does that mean you're going to be baptizing your babies? Now you know better than that. <laughs> yeah, you will as soon as they confess faith in Christ. <laughs> I baptize every one of my babies. <laughs> I just want you to know he's he's batting for 100 right now with all his kids. So and I expect the same thing to happen with his grandkids because the promises of God are true. I just want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the work of the Spirit is efficacious. So uh, <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Amen. Hey, we Amen. agree on that. <laughs> Well, listen, guys, we appreciate you uh, giving your time uh, to us to come on and have a conversation about this and uh, appreciate the good work that you do and uh, look forward to having more opportunities to have these kinds of conversations going forward. Tom, Tom, thank you. When I first met you in person, and I think it was 2019, I've really um, just appreciated you and your ministry and your legacy and very grateful um, for you, Tom, and Founders Ministry and everything you guys are doing. Yeah, I can I say something real quick? Yeah, um, I wish we had you on the show where you were running for president, Doc. Um, <laughs> I and, tried. I and, tried. You tried. Yeah. And, and I want to say something else too. I'm, we my, my we, we, we all we all voted for you, just uh, for the record. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not a yeah. Well, that yeah. means I got like seven votes that I can count out, <laughs> right? <laughs> you have Vody Bakum and yourself. A, a opportunity, a great yeah. moment, an Dream opportunity team. to change the Southern Baptist Convention and and move this thing down the road to better light. And Doc, the fact that they did not vote for you and you did not win, I think puts them under a certain type of judgment. So I just get you some more trouble. I'm just gonna tell it right now how it is. They had an opportunity and they missed it. Yeah. And I just I'm, I'm praying that they repent and come back and say, please come back and be president for us. <laughs> They're we causing made a some sort of judgment on. We themselves. made a mistake. <laughs> a blessing on Tom though. Yeah, well, I just and I, I was add my my two cents. I, Tom and uh, Graham, both of you, re- really, really grateful for what you guys yeah. are doing. Really excited about um, the the policy center that you guys are working on. The I forgot what it's called Institute Inst- of Public Theology. Institute of Public Theology. Think it's wonderful, awesome, and please know that we we are uh, look we look up to you guys. We we absolutely look up to you yeah. and your leadership. Uh, you're one of our fathers right. in the faith. That's right. You're one of the ge- you're one of the generals in the army. And uh, and we take seriously when you raise concerns or questions with us. It, right. it weighs heavy on us, and we appreciate you. And um, and we're praying God's blessing on founders and Amen. the work there um, in uh, Cape Coral. Yeah, and please don't write no more articles on us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for being with us. It, <laughs> okay, appreciate you. Thanks so much Love for tuning in to this episode of the Sword and Trial. We look forward to having you with us again next time.